Hi, it's Chester Tuggle at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Uh, in this video, we're in MS Project and we're looking, or we're going to look at the earned value table. Um, the earned value table is a great little table where it helps us to estimate the performance of our project in terms of its cost, its schedule, and its work values. Now, there's a couple of things you need to uh, do before you can use the earned value table. And one of those is to set a project baseline. Now, a baseline is a capture of your start and finish dates, your work, and your cost values. Uh, very easy to set a baseline. What you do is you just go to your project tab. You go to set baseline here, and you set a baseline. You will notice, actually, you can set more than one baseline. That's because you might set an initial baseline after you've done your initial set of planning. And then 12 months down the line, six months down the line, you might want to set another baseline to capture another set of values at that point in time. So really, you'd set your baseline after you've done all your initial planning. So here we are. I'm going to set my baseline. And that's going to record all of those values. Now, um, some things you should be aware of. If I go to the options in project. So sorry, that was uh, file and then options. And then go to my advanced tab. Uh, there's a couple of things down here you should be aware of. Uh, earned value options for this project. Baseline for earned value calculations. Now, you can only base your earned value calculations on one baseline. Uh, it's chosen the default baseline by default, but in this list you can choose which baseline you want to base those calculations on. We've also got an option here for earned value method percentage complete. There are two options there. Percentage complete and physical percentage complete. Now percentage complete, um, so by default the earned value method will base its calculation on the percentage of the duration of a task completed. Your other option is physical percent complete. So if you were say making a product and you wanted to say, I want to base my earned value method not on the percentage of the duration of the task, but on the percentage of the actual product that has been made up to the state of state, then you can choose physical percent complete. Now, there is a physical percent complete column that you can use when you track progress on your um, uh, project. I'll just show you, though, that that default, all it basically does is when you create a new task, it sets, so I'm in the task information screen for a task, it just by default sets this earned value method here. So you can do it on a task by task basis as well. But we're, just for simplicity's sake, keeping it at percent complete, which is probably the field that, uh, the method that you'll uh, most often use. Now, um, I'm actually in my earned values table already, but the way that you would switch to it would be that you'd go to your view tab, you go to tables, and more tables, earned value. Now, if you want the earned value table to appear in the main menu, when you go to tables, just go to edit, show in menu, and from then on in, that earned value table is going to appear there. There are a couple of other earned value tables you'll notice there, but the majority of what we need to know will be in this table. We can always put the extra fields that appear in these within the earned value table anyway. So I'm in my earned value table. Now the next thing you need to know about the uh, earned value calculations is they're always based on a state of state. Now the state of state is by default today's date. Um, so it would do its calculations uh, up to today's date. But you can change the state of state. Maybe you want to base your calculations on uh, your earned values calculations up to the end of last month. Or maybe you've done a whole load of data collection on your project and you want to enter those values based on the state of state last Friday or something because you haven't quite had time to enter the information uh, up to date. Now, to change your status date, what you do is you just go to the project tab here, and then there's a status date option here. Now, if we click on that, you can change your status date at any point. Now, we're actually going to set the status date to 
the first, uh, no we're not, we're going to send it to the end of, uh, no we're not, we're going to send it to the 2nd of July at 1700 hours. 2nd of July at 1700 hours. Um, you can change the date and the time there, you'll notice. Click on OK. Now, the reason I've done that is exactly halfway through this first task. Okay, It's halfway through this 10-day task. You'll see why I've done that in a moment. Now, halfway through that task, let me just check that. I think actually we're going to go for the first... Yeah, sorry, I wanted to set it halfway through uh, the task, which would actually be the 1st of July, not the 2nd of July. Apologies for that. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 days into a 10-day task. Now, just looking at this table, we can see that our present value uh, field tells us that if we were halfway through the task, which we said we on the status state uh, we are, we should have spent £3,000, which is half of the baseline figure, which we can see here, budget at completion field. Um, now, so the present value tells us what we should have spent. It looks at your state to state, and it says, right, you're halfway through the task. Now, according to the baseline, you should have spent £3,000. The EV, or earned value field, is currently zero because we haven't actually gone in and said that we've completed any of the task. The actual cost field is also at zero because that would look at what you've actually spent. The difference between the two is this will tell you what you've actually spent and this will tell you what you should have spent if you'd have done that work according to the cost on the baseline. Now, let's go in and say, well, we have actually done 50% of the work. So that's correct up to, the, up to our status date. According to the baseline, we should have done 50% of the work. So the earned value is 3,000, but the actual cost is 3,000 as well. That's all of the same as the PV value, the plan value as well. So these are all in sync at the moment. But if I said, actually, we've only done half the work we should have completed, so I've said 25% of the total task. Look, the earned value is now 1,500. Plan value, we should have spent 3,000, but we've just said we've only spent 1,500 because we've done 25% of the total task, which is half of what we should have done halfway through the task. Our schedule variance shows a minus figure. SV, schedule variance, and that basically tells us that we're behind schedule because we've only spent half the amount of the work that we should have done. Now, let's see if we can get these two figures to be different. Okay. Well, what I could do is if I go back to my entry table, and then I'm going to go to my resource sheet, what I'm going to do is say that the rate for the coder who is doing the task we're looking at has gone up to a hundred pounds. So it was 70 has gone up to a hundred pounds. So obviously the task, the actual cost of the task is going to increase. So what I'm going to do now is just go back to my uh, earned value table. And look, there is now a difference. So the actual cost of the task is 2000 pounds up to the state of state. Whereas according to the baseline cost of the task, because I've only done 25% uh, of it, it should have cost 1,500, and my plan value is 3,000 because this is what I should have completed by now, 3,000. So you can see we start to get a difference between these three values. Schedule variance is as was. That tells me that I should have spent 1,500 pound more, which means I'm behind schedule. But this negative figure tells me a cost variance. The negative figure tells me that there is an overspend. So it's the difference between these two values here. So this negative figure tells me that I've fallen behind schedule. And this negative figure here tells me that there is an overspend up to the state of state. Now, let's just look at this figure here, estimated at completion. This frightening figure here tells me that I'm actually going to spend £8,000 based on the overspend so far on my project. 
estimated at completion. Budget at completion is 6,000. That's what the task will cost at the end of when the task is completed. But this has looked at my overspend so far. Imagine that there will be a constant overspend at that rate and calculated that my overspend is at 8,000 pounds. Now, if you want to see the exact calculation involved in that, uh, if you follow the link in the YouTube description, um, you will see the calculation in the little written tutorial that we have on our, our website. This value here tells us the difference between those two figures. So a negative figure tells me that there is going to be an overspend. Okay, so there we are. Some useful figures there in terms of earned values. A very simple scenario, I know, but hopefully that will help you with your earned values table. Thank you very much.